Okay, I'm going to show you how I glass a, a tube or make a fiberglass tube. Uh, in this case, it's going to be 98 millimeter. I'm using an Aerotech motor case as the mandrel. I have some 2 mil mylar over the top of that. And when I start it, I tape it only on the corners. Don't tape it in the field, otherwise it'll be really hard to take off the, the, the case from what you've just made. So only tape it on the corners, roll it around. It actually overlaps about an inch and a half that it starts there and that's how much it overlaps is about an inch and a half. There's nothing else in between this. There's no spray, there's no wax. I have my fiberglass cut and on a roll down here. Um, this happens to be Tap Plastics 5.85, I think it's the lightweight Boat C. Um, I have it 36 inches wide is the piece I'm going to make up right now. And it's about 74 inches long to make six complete wraps on this tube. There's a little bit extra that I'll cut off at the end. Um, so I have everything set up that I have my, my mandrel ready to go, my glass ready to go. I'm going to be putting peel ply on top of it. I have enough here to go around twice. I have some extra paint brushes or chip brushes in case the one I have starts losing all of its bristles or breaks. Some extra gloves, some paper towels, and I have the epoxy. I already have the epoxy all mixed up. I'm using Raka Boat Epoxy. Um, I've had really good luck with it. It's um, a 5 to 1 epoxy. It's a little bit thick. So I thin it down with denatured alcohol. And all I'm going to do is apply it with a 2 inch chip brush. So now that I have everything ready, the first thing I'm going to do is put some uh, epoxy on the mandrel itself. Um, you need to put it kind of thick to start with to get the glass to sit, stick. My mylar is about an inch extra long on each end. Any of this extra epoxy, we're just going to work out through the glass. Uh, this is going to be a minimum diameter rocket. It's going to fly on this motor here that's the 15360 case. Um, fiberglass fins. Most of its rockets all going to be fiberglass. There's probably going to be a little bit of carbon fiber in the tip to tip fin attachment. If you come across any of these little bristles that are coming out, get them. They come off pretty easy. you picking at them with the brush. That's what the paper towel's for. Roll this around. Again, I'm just putting a good thick coat of epoxy on here. The fiberglass piece that I'm using weighs about 340 grams, and so I mixed up 360 grams of epoxy. Um, I can usually do a little bit less than 50 to 1 doing this method. So now that I have everything coated, I can start my fiberglass. To keep track of how many wraps I'm doing, I have lines that kind of get me started, and then when I get to the last inch, I know I put on enough. So I'm going to take this. Pull it up a little bit, attach it where my line is. Get it semi straight. Any of these little extra hairs that you have can get cut off. Now before they get too unmanageable.
Okay, so now that I have that in a general idea where I want to get started, I can come back and I'm going to just tap this down. If it's a little high or a little bit low, I can pull this all up just by the direction that I'm pulling things. So this side's all kind of sagging on me. I'm going to pull it up, pull it up, pull this up. All I'm doing is getting it on there straight to the line that I have here. Make sure everything's wetted out at this point and that it's where you want it to start. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to pull lightly down on this first layer. You can see the glass start to wet out from the, it's pulling the epoxy up from the mandrel. If it starts to veer off course, you can just pull it your way. You can get some over here and start pulling it back. There's not enough epoxy inside to pull through. Add some. Again, this first layer is pretty wet. I've done um, up to a 5 inch minimum diameter rockets using the same method. Um, this rocket's going to have 6 layers. The 5 inch rocket had 9. I like to use a lot of thin layers and I think of it kind of like plywood that is 3 ply half inch stronger or weaker than 8 ply half inch. The more plies to me the stronger it's going to be. Just like plywood. Again, pulling this around, pulling it around. This is all the first layer. And right here is where my second layer is starting to happen. Okay? Making sure it's all wet. Okay, so now this is where my second layer starts. So I'm going to pull this down. What I'm doing is trying to pull it tight, kind of like a Chinese finger handcuff thing. We're getting off a little bit off of here. Pull it back over. Once I get it pulled down, then my concern is to wet that out. By pulling it down like the Chinese finger handcuff thing, you're pulling it tight and you're also pulling any of the epoxy that's extra from the layer below it.
Okay, that's all wetted out and I'm going to start back and I'm going to pull it tight. Pull it tight as I pull the next piece up on there. Tight, tight, tight. We're getting off a little bit, so I'm going to pull it my way. I'm using pretty good force on this. It's making it tight and it's pulling up. You can see the wet spots. See the wet spots all through here? I can take that and I can pull out epoxy around if I want. Or I can use it in the next layer. have plenty of working time with this epoxy and the reason I'm hurrying is for the length of the videotape. Okay, so that's done. So then I can start down here, pull it, pull it. Just finished my second layer. My marks are right here. I can see the line underneath the glass. Wetting everything out, pulling epoxy from the bottom. Pulling. You can see the epoxy starting to soak through. Once you get it tight, then you can come back and wet out any little bits. You can do the same technique over cardboard tubes or any type of tube like that. The first glass job I did, it took me like two hours to peel off the shiny glassine layer of craft tube. And then I found out the next day that you could actually peel like an onion that outer layer off. Um, you want that porous underneath surface so the epoxy can stick to it a little bit better. Same method with carbon fiber. 
on this rocket I'm just um, trying to prove something to myself that you can do a high power rocket laid up by hand just fiberglass maybe a little carbon fiber on the tip to tip for the fins I like the look of the carbon fiber so do chicks but you don't have to buy an entire roll of carbon fiber and build quarter inch thick fins the fins on this one are going to start out as eighth inch G10 fins and do a one third, two thirds full tip to tip layup on it. Um, it's not hard to do, it's not expensive. Once you see it done a couple times or talk to somebody about it and do it, um, pretty easy. Pretty gratifying to say you built the entire rocket, except for the electronics or whatever that you designed it, and that it holds up and flies like you want it to. So I'm starting the fourth layer right now, just wetting it out. Pulling it tight, pulling it tight. Wetting it out. The fiberglass for uh, 60 inch body tubes, I got a piece of 60 inch wide top plastics, 5.85, I think it's boat C glass, I think it's $11 a yard, so I got about $33 in glass for this rocket. Um, epoxy, I don't think I'll be using an entire quart. Even at $30 a quart, I have no idea what a quart costs. So, call it $40 for the fiberglass, $30 for the epoxy. We're going to do this thing for $70. We got a couple dollars for the 2 mil mylar that I put down over the motor case. We got another couple of 4 bucks for the Peel ply. So under a hundred bucks to make a custom tube that fits this motor. A lot of four inch rockets actually are four inch inside diameter, and the motors fit into them pretty loose. Um, that's fine. You're giving up, you know, ten to fifteen thousandths of outside dimension because of that. As compared to this, we're using the two mil mylar that we have four thousandths of an inch of play when we stick the motor in there. So this rocket, even though it's fiberglass, might be thinner outside diameter than some of the carbon fiber kits out there.
just start in the fifth row, I believe. Pulling it down, pulling it out, getting it in place. Making sure there's no wrinkles in it. And I'm putting quite a bit of pressure when I'm pushing on that brush. You can see that it's bowing over right at the metal part. So it's not like I'm being delicate with this. I want it tight. I don't want any dry spots in it. And I don't want any extra epoxy in there. And I, I know I've done good on the epoxy when I have just barely enough at 50 to 50 when I get all done. And once this tube sets up and I cut the ends and weigh it and stuff per foot, I'll be able to figure out how well I did. I've never used the heat tape. Seems like some guys could do good with it, some guys can't. Um, just never seemed to need it. You know, I'm doing 50 to 50. It's a pretty good ratio for hand layups. You don't have to vacuum bag it. One of the key points was at the beginning when I was talking about taping down the mylar only in the two corners that I even tried a half inch piece of mass or scotch tape right on the edge, just barely showing and laid up over it. Well, what happens is that masking tape has to break loose and if it doesn't tear and starts to gum up and slide, it gums up and slides the entire length off the motor case. Um, then you have to use either heat or cold to change the diameters of the mandrel to get it to work. And how I've done that in the past is um, put it in a warm area, you know, closet near a heater, get a whole bunch of ice, put the forward closure on there, dump all the ice in there that you have, fill it with water and let it sit for about 15 minutes. And that will shock the motor case to being cold, which makes it shrink, and the fiberglass doesn't react too easy or too quickly and stays a little bit larger. And usually that'll help get the two unstuck if you have that tape issue. It's a pretty fine line whether they're going to slide or not. I laid up a 36 inch long tube on this yesterday or a couple of days ago and it got to its rubbery state and I took the masking tape off the ends and was able to slide the marlar on there so I wanted to leave it on there so it's set up in the This is my tape that I had on here when I weighed it. Been looking for this. This piece actually weighed 325. So even if you mess up, don't be shy. Just a big wet blanket. Lay it all back down, pull it back out. Get back on track, pulling it down. And I forget what I was saying. Oh, the fine line. So, take it to work where we have an area that's pretty warm and wanted it to set up and everything. And went out there at lunchtime and grabbed a hold of it and I couldn't get it to slide. Well, the mandrel had grown, but the fiberglass hadn't because it was already set up. So then I waited till the next morning, when it was cold here, and um, went out there and was able to slide it right off. So 
just changing the temperature of the mandrel, like right now it's probably 40 degrees here. Well, if I try to take this apart when it's 90 degrees, the mandrel is going to have gotten bigger. So keep in mind, you know, the temperature that you're setting up and shrinkage and all that stuff. And if they won't separate, go to the extreme ends of the heat range. It's usually the easiest to go to the cold range, warming something up this size. Um, takes a little bit of doing. Wetting everything out. Make sure we're still recording. Red light's on, that's good. We're going to be cutting this tape off here in a minute. Just want to wrap it all the way around. spots. Pull this all out. Looking for my crappy scissors. Just cutting off the extra. And actually a jagged line is better than a surgical straight line because it smooths out easier. some of the epoxy off the brush, get that back over there, get that laying down, watch out for these boogers. Tapping is better than brushing. six layers of glass on here. I'm going to take my peel ply. It's already been cut. This is Teflon porous peel ply. I stick it just below the edge where everything ended. I'm going to send what there's not much epoxy left, but I'm going to put a little bit of denatured alcohol in here so I can make a nice slippery epoxy thin. I'll paint this across the top. Same thing, pulling down, pulling down, pulling down.
this uh, pupa is a little bit thicker than some of the other things, and I think that actually helps in keeping it keeping it more round, if that makes sense. Rounder. You can see it kind of beating up. That's the epoxy coming through. And all I'm using that for is kind of a lubricant so that I can pull it so it slips by. So just starting the second layer. So with all this tightening and the Chinese finger cuff and all the brushing and stuff, there shouldn't be any dry areas. And by doing it like this, there shouldn't be any overly wet areas. That what this peel ply is doing is it's pulling out any extra epoxy. 
making the tube a little bit rounder on the outside and it gives it a little micro finish supposedly that's pretty good to be epoxy to. But it's pretty good finish. Um, it's worth it. Just finishing up here. Then when we come back, it'll be um, taking off this mylar, taking it off the tube, checking it, seeing how much it weighs, seeing how we did. So, this is not only way to do things. It's the way I've been doing it. They've been holding up to pretty extreme flights. Pretty easy to do once you see it. It's not overly expensive. You don't have to get carried away with carbon fiber.